So I first learned about Bitcoin back in 2013 when I considered using it as a payment method on my first e-commerce store. I never set it up and that was a huge mistake because I would have literally made more had I just done that one thing from that entire store. Then in 2017, I and everyone else got into crypto during the last big bull run that saw Bitcoin reach 19K. And like many people, I was not in it for the technology. I was in it for the speculation and I didn't know really anything about it. I actually remember sitting on a beach in Thailand while some guy explained Ethereum smart contract technology. And while I didn't really understand anything what he was saying, I did still buy some. My brand, hmm, number go up. So I got into it. And my crypto assets at their high, I think in 2017, were around like 90K. And then the market crashed. And I think it went down to like 9K or 11K. Ouch. So over the last year, I've gone really deep into crypto, except this time I'm learning and using it as a tool rather than merely speculating on how much it is worth. So now a significant amount of my net worth is in crypto because I believe it will play a huge role in the future. So this video and this series of videos is my attempt to introduce you to decentralized finance and why I find it so interesting. I'm gonna use these videos to give you a step-by-step -step guide, something that I wish that I had when I was first starting because I was kind of stumbling along. DeFi summer was last summer, that's when I was getting into it, and there wasn't exact instructions. And if there was, it's like, okay, is this person trying to sell me something? Are they trying to show some random coin? So I just want these videos to be very matter of fact, this is what it is, this is what's possible, and this is what I see in the future. Now, before I move forward, this is not financial advice. DeFi is the wild west right now, and this comes with volatility and risk. This video and these series of videos are for informational purposes only. I'm just some girl on the internet. Okay, so decentralized finance, DeFi, is the fusion of finance and blockchain technology. It's a movement to build a world where loans, interest rates, an entire financial industry is controlled by individuals instead of big corporations, where there's no relationship between banks and money, no middlemen taking their cut, only individuals trading with each other. Now, before I jump in, let's first talk about how all this works with blockchain technology. And if you are a blockchain expert and you're watching this, this is gonna be very, very simplified. Uh, so don't comment, like move on. What is the blockchain? The blockchain is a digital public ledger. I want you to think about it as a public Google Doc that everyone can see. They can see if there's a change made, what it was, who changed it, when they did it, everything like that. All that information is stored as a digital ledger and the ledger is duplicated and distributed across a network of thousands of computers on what they call the blockchain. So the blockchain is a network of thousands of nodes and this is why we call it decentralized. Because while I compared the blockchain concept to a global Google Doc, no one company like Google, person or government owns it. So they can't go in and delete it or fudge information just because they want to, because they would have to literally be changing thousands and thousands of computers. So because of this, censorship or shutdown would be hugely complicated and extremely difficult. And that is why it's considered so secure. Cryptocurrency. So crypto is money that uses cryptographic proof which is the blockchain. So Bitcoin was the first cryptocurrency and was designed to handle peer-to-peer -peer payments without needing to involve intermediaries. So everything would be based on cryptographic proof rather than the blind trust that we just give to banks. I'll talk a little bit more about that later. So that's really the most I'm gonna be talking about Bitcoin though, uh, as DeFi is built on Ethereum. So it's Bitcoin's little brother and the second largest cryptocurrency by market cap. I also much prefer it to Bitcoin, but more on that later. It was created in 2015 by Vitalik Buterin. So while Bitcoin is known for this peer-to-peer -peer payment system, Ethereum is capable of way more. It can power decentralized applications like finance tools and social media platform using smart contract technology. So here's how I think about it. Bitcoin is like digital gold. It's a store of value, but much like gold, like it's kind of just sits there. Ethereum is like the internet. So it's a platform of possibilities where you build on top of it. And then DeFi specifically are the finance tools being built on the Ethereum network. So Ethereum is a platform where businesses, websites, apps can be built on top of. And we've already seen the explosion of NFTs, which use ERC20 tokens, and that's only the beginning. We're seeing BitClout, which is a social media platform on Ethereum also being built. So we're gonna be just talking mostly about DeFi, 
not any of these other technologies, but I'm just showing you the power that is on the Ethereum network. Smart so contracts help you exchange money, shares, anything of value in a transparent, conflict-free way while avoiding the needs of a middleman. So it's done through code. So while blockchain acts like a database confirming the transactions have taken place, smart contracts are kind of like a programming language that execute predetermined conditions like if this, then that. And so protocols or projects are just bundles of smart contracts that deal with everyday things that you might have intermediaries for. Let's talk about some real world examples. Commercial real estate is ripe for disruption due to the length, the complexity, the expense, if all property details were stored on the blockchain, so like title, ownership history, you could easily access that information. So buyers and sellers could both access that information instead of relying on title management companies and agents. So the blockchain could make these issues less burdensome because you're not adding like a bunch of middlemen into this, what could be a pretty simple transaction. So if all property details, including key information about ownership history and titles were stored on the blockchain, then buyers and sellers could easily access it. And you can already see this happening with NFTs. So you see the price history, who owned it before. So if you thought of it like commercial real estate, like each building would be its own NFT. So this commercial project that you're thinking of buying, would have its own information of who owned it, what, what the situation is, so that you don't have to verify information with a bunch of middlemen. And then the transaction time and costs and fees would decrease significantly because there wouldn't be as many intermediaries. Another example is insurance. So if you compare FinTech app Lemonade to the DeFi protocol Nexus Mutual, you can see here from this graph that they are better at both scale and capital efficiency because they're doing everything with code instead of with people. Another idea of how to use this technology would be in concert ticket technology, because if you think about it, a concert ticket is an NFT. It is unique. It's like the date of the concert, who's playing and your seat number, those are all unique. And so what could be possible to cut out intermediaries like Ticketmaster, how much do we hate paying those convenience fees um, when we're buying a ticket or those scalpers that will buy it and then up like increase the price which cuts fans out so the fans of the actual artist can't see their uh, favorite artist without paying a ton so taylor swift has kind of talked about this and tried to put things in place to get her fans to be able to buy tickets but an nft type software that i talked about in this tweet thread is something that could be created in order to stop this sort of scalping and give things back to the artist and to the fans that want to watch. Thanks for watching this video. In the next video, I'm going to share with you traditional finance versus decentralized finance and why it is such a huge difference between them, what makes sense with DeFi and what doesn't make sense anymore with traditional finance. So keep up with that. And I'll also show you how to basically get 4% on your savings without a bunch of the decentralized stuff, but you can do this pretty easily.